Hello everyone, welcome back to Hexen. This is the third episode I'm recording on the same day, which means a whole week's worth of episodes are being recorded at once, so I've not read your comments, um, but I will have done. So if you spoil it anything by guessing what's going to happen, mentioning no names, uh, that's fine. I don't really care, it's not like... We have the world's biggest uh, reader base. This is so cool, by the way. Watch this. You watching? You watching? Whoa! It fell in through the window! In the ceiling! Got some HP back out of it, though. Oh. I like color effects as well. It's modern, that is. Right, this is going to be bad as well, because I think these don't break when you hit them. They break when you go down there. So uh, we'll deal with that. On an ad hoc basis. This seems like a good time to use something that has splash damage. Although we don't have much mana for that either. This could be a good time to use something that just has a very low amount of damage. But nevertheless... Oh, there's nothing there. Nevertheless, does the job. I.e. Our mace. It does open. You can tell by the line on the map that it is a... It's the junction between a pair of sectors with different floor or ceiling heights. Which you can hide on the map in the Doom engine. So they don't have to have given us that information and yet we have it. I don't need these yet. Uh, yeah, this is probably where I first remember actually having used Wraith Verge because, first of all, it's an epic time to use Wraith Verge. Second of all, I'm pretty sure I just cheated my way through here because I was very young. Not very young. I was pretty young. Yeah, I would say very young, especially by today's standards where I'm like, I'm never mind years old. Where's that symbol again? This is the symbol we had to press. Maybe it wasn't randomized. Got I need an instant firing weapon. Even if it has low range. Because I keep dodging. Little shitbags. Right, so we should be able to parkour again. And remember to shout parkour. Parkour! Done it. Dragon skin braces. I think they just give you a, a great amount of armor, but I've not really used such thing. What? Did you know that? What's going to happen? Why don't you tell me then? Just got a piece of Wraith Verge, which gave us some mana, which is actually very good. Because I was about to use Wraith Verge and I didn't have enough mana. Uh, we're going to use our Firestorm, because it's the only weapon we have any ammo for. Apart from all this ammo right here, but never mind that. Oh, hello. Reaching? Reaching. Good job. Ow. That was really bad damage. And of course, Crystal, a Crater of Might. So that's actually going to help us in the future. I'm saving these things up now that I'm sure what they do. Although, we did use one in a bit of a pickle on the Dark Wood. Dark Forest? You know what I'm talking about. I think we're okay. That was actually a lot easier than expected, thanks to Wraith Verge, although using Wraith Verge in anger like that. I'm just happy that we have as much mana left as a result as we do. I think this particular map is self-contained, by which I mean I think that all the doors open from within the map. Have a look. I wish they'd stop spawning in weird places, though. Maybe I'm wrong? Is there a switch-like thing in here? No, there's just the... I love the way they change the lighting. Sort of dynamically as you play. It's not true dynamic lighting, but... It's another one of those things you can do with scripts, is you can pick the lighting level that you want all these sectors to turn to. In Doom it was either on or off, uh, and on was whatever you set it to when you made the map, and off was zero, so that was the extent of dynamic lighting in Doom itself. Hello. 
Save our mana for the next adventure because I strongly suspect that we're going to find ourselves needing Wraith Verge a few times. And Wraith Verge is actually really, really helping at this stage. Earlier on it was, it was stuff we could deal with without it. But when you get just an entire map full of enemies that reflect most of your shots back at you, certainly it does seem to help to have um, something like Wraith Verge. Oh, this is this one, okay. I have to keep switching back and forth between these to see if what you've done has uh, had an effect. So that's the Wolf Chapel. That's the monastery itself, so this is the dragon or something. Dragon Chapel. Okay, three chapels. That was uh, probably a bit less min maxi than even I am happy with. What? I'm a fan of that. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Step backwards a little bit. Right, I've done two nines. Let's go back to the Dragon Chapel. So, those things in the ceiling, normally you couldn't see them because you'd be playing with the original Doom engine, whose up down looking was not quite as um, modern, not quite as accomplished as the OpenGL version. Those are Afrits, but you can see how they're not um, glowing. They're dormant, they're completely dormant. And at some point they'll be woken up. Probably by being sat alight. So at some point they're all going to wake up and uh, start attacking us. I don't know when. Don't like that thing shooting me from over there. I don't like these slaughters either. So I'm not quite sure how to deal with this particular map. Let's, uh, let's try a better the devil you know sort of situation. You can't hit me and I can hit you. So that's certainly working out in my favour, I think. I think I'm hitting you. I'm making a noise like I'm hitting you. You're getting upset with me. I'm currently working on the principle that everything else that's shooting me can't actually hit me. Which is why I'm not moving. <laughs> it could hit me when I do that. But I'm a bit more confident that I can hit that thing, so... This is my Isaac skills of dodging coming into play here. Which you can see why I'm quite bad at Isaac as well. Uh, I guess, right. We can probably deal with those Etins slightly more up close and personally. But... Oh yeah, you kill that. I love how they fight amongst each other. And that is something that you have to build into a game. They, they're not just going to... Well... You could build it so that they attack anything that hurts them enough. But, you know, you could have built it so that they only attack the player. And they didn't. Although that seems to be happening anyway. So for some reason that Etin attacked... Ah, oh, I can't get out of the way. Attack that Slaughter, which is certainly helpful to me. Because it means I don't have to do so much damage to this thing. Although I seem to be able, unable to hit it anyway. There we go. There's going to be another one up there, no doubt. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Jinkies! Stop firing. Don't waste bullets on invulnerable things. Let's try this one. Ah. Uh, we might have to go up and deal with those. There's also some very cool stuff using the moving... Uh, the, the rotating things in this level as well. But we'll get to that. For too long. I have a little doubt. Thank you for opening something. Which has more enemies in it. Yay! To heck with it. There you go. If it doesn't kill many things, at least it weakens them to a considerable degree. And causes them to put their shields up, maybe, or at least be completely unable to attack me because they're taking so much damage themselves. Did I just get hit by my own shot? I genuinely thought that I'd avoided it. So much colour in this game. Quake was uh, somewhat slated for being so brown, so dull in colour. I mean, I tend to agree. I have played Quake and I found that there was not very much colour at all. Quake 2 somewhat addressed that. 
but when you have a game with this much gold and blue and green, and then the same studio comes up with a game that is completely brown, with only a few splashes of colour here and there, it's hard not to consider that maybe they uh, dropped the baton a little bit. Got rid of that, that's very good. If this thing would die though. Yeah, that made you cross, which means I'm hitting you. <coughs> Ow, that made me cross, which means you're hitting me. Again, quartz flasks seem to be a dime a dozen right now, so I'm going to use them to my advantage as much as I can. Right, when you shoot that back wall, the slime goes down. Which I think is what that thing is there for. It entices you to try that. Or discover that. Uh, but we'll do that later. I'd like to... Oh, there's another one in there. Maybe something else shot to call me. Here we go. Oh, you've gone. Wow. I got you in that, much, that little effort. Right? I mean, my uh, dancing around tactics in this game are born of a, a modern FPS player's understanding of, you know, keyboard and mouse usage, basically. Previously, it would have just been keyboard and keyboard usage. And all the things that I'm doing to fight these fights were basically unheard of in the era that Hexen is from. Uh, ran out of mana. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. Especially when you're using it to heal yourself. That didn't do as much damage as I hoped. Why are you stuck in here? It's making me sad. Oh my god, die. No one dead. Is. <laughs> as I was saying, my mad skills. Uh, that took about 10 minutes, so I'm going to do a cut again. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. Alright, I cleared it out a bit. Um, I made much more liberal use of Wraith Verge this time, because it seemed like a good idea. Uh, we didn't seem to have suffered too much in terms of mana for that. Uh, because... Like, I was using both weapons anyway. So... Right, these can hurt. These will hurt you. You can be crushed between those. This is a cool thing. Yay! Um, that's not funny. Right, these just constantly rotating things can do a uh, considerable amount of damage if you're not good. I thought that what I would do is come around and uh, deal with these things slightly more personally, rather than trying to shoot them from the ground. Didn't mean to use that. I meant to use this, but that's okay. Those poison clouds are going to stay down there, aren't they? Yes. Alas. So we found a, an extra ninth of the puzzle, so that's nice. We'll come back in here and finish this off again. There's plenty of quartz flasks, so it doesn't matter too much if you accidentally use one. Can someone uh, confirm for me whether the bishop's shots are slightly homing? I feel like it may be the case that they are. Can you stop shooting me from behind when I'm trying to deal with something in front of me? Seems a bit mean. I activated the Afrits, uh, which was performed admirably by trying to get the HP that was in that room. So there's another monster closet. Again, I don't really feel that that trope is necessary in uh, Hexen because of the fact that you can arbitrarily spawn creatures in and I think it's made a little bit worse by the fact that Hexen, the people who made Hexen, the designers, really had some good ideas going for them. So the fact that they had, you know, these uh, fairly situationally obscure things happening 
guess, it, again, in the benefit of hindsight, when you have the idea of this monster closet trope, you can see that it's not that great. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm getting tired. I'm going to uh, save Scum next time because I thought I didn't need to. Obviously, I do. I'm just getting a little bit cocky, but watch. Uh, excuse me? I just put Wraith Verge through you and you went, no, that's fine. Whatever. Might as well activate these uh, Africs too. Deal with them. And you can go out there and deal with them. No? I just love watching it, especially with the like dark light. Well, I guess I'll put another cut in. See you in a minute. Right, I'm saving it. Watch. I keep, I get a little bit, um, a little bit rash, a little bit cocky. I'm like, oh, we can take this uh, slaughter on from point blank range with the cleric's weapons. No, 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 you cannot do that. It does not work. You can't even take on these serpents. Properly. You know, because of the very nature of these enemies, they are as much likely to hurt you as you are to hurt them. But they're better hurting you than you are hurting them. Right, I'll use Wraith Verge even more this time. <laughs> Had enough. Sort it all out. Get rid of it. I don't have enough time to ah, fire. They fire faster than me, so I'm almost guaranteed to be taking damage whenever I'm using this particular weapon, because I don't want you to... Um, because I take a little bit longer to charge and aim than they do, basically. Wouldn't mind um, wouldn't mind homing shots myself, by the way. I don't think we can reach that with this weapon. I made sure to get rid of more of the slaughters by using Wraith Verge than I did last time because they're very annoying and I hate them. I also made sure to get rid of all the Afrits with Wraith Verge because that was fun and I like watching them die horribly. I think all the things I can hear are still down there. I don't know whether those um, stalkers will move on to a lift like this. Which is a very strange concept, by the way. So, we'll talk about that in the future. This way, then. Over here is our switch. We should at least save it when we pull this puzzle switch, right? See, I don't know whether any of these is going to uh, gonna open up more of the stuff in the Wolf Chapel without telling me. In the... Uh, earlier parts of the game, of course, it would tell you all the time. You can be crushed between those, I think, so do be careful. I'm going to save it here. And... Because we, we've achieved something. I think that's a good time to save. At least we've achieved something. But I saved it before I uh, came back because I'm sick of redoing it. For no real other reason than that, mostly. Right, what we can do, though, is we can jump from one of these to the other. Nope, I think it's the other way we can do that jump. Okay then. We can't get up here. Well, I'd like to. Did we go up here yet? Yeah. Is this one dead? This is the one that got me, and I don't want it to get me again. Alright. Aha! Standard trope. A uh, oddly lighted section of map. There's a secret door. Through and through. All the time. You cannot fault it. What did that do? <coughs> Something... It's presumably opened as a result of it. It's not that. This will slide as well. Which is something I haven't mentioned. They can not only rotate, but also slide. 
They can basically do whatever you want because you move the locus of them. So maybe there's another one of those over here. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. <clears throat> well, I guess we have no choice but to go down here, which scares me. I guess we use this one to give us a bit more of a, a benefit if we start getting attacked. Apparently these things try and get behind you. It's pretty cool. I don't know if the AI on this is primitive, and I mean that as in... I don't know whether the AI, for its time, is considered simple. Because I was saying earlier that it was um, very arcadey. Which I still think is true. But I don't know whether that's a function of the fact that I, AI in those days was arcadey. Or whether this was basically the the extent of AI. They had set patterns and you, know, you, you just dealt with it. And yeah. That's really gross. I can't wait for my uh, favourite level, which is the sewers. So, when I was talking about the AI earlier, I found that Bioshock Infinite's AI was kind of untenable. It's so difficult to understand that I, I could not cope with the combat. It took me so many times to do various boss fights uh, and things like that because I... I I couldn't understand where the enemies were and where they'd gone half the time. <clears throat> see if there's something we can see on the map that we need to be uh, paying attention to. Is that switch which we pulled? There's a switch there, but I can't get to it yet because we need to go. Uh, apparently. Yeah, we found it. That's good to know. Um, I found AI in. Bioshock Infinite was so complicated. I don't know if it was extremely advanced AI, so that the enemies were just basically better than me. Another ninth. That's pretty cool. Uh, or if, you know, I was just bad at the game. I, I couldn't understand it. Whereas in this, it's just so simple. You know, you, you go here and then you go there and then the, you just run around and the enemies are where you expect them to be and then you shoot them and they're dead. Simple as that. I guess we try going back to here. See if we've won anything. I hear something open and something appear. They're still alive. So this has happened. Now this is a leap of faith type situation, which I think is really cool. You basically walk. You dick. <laughs> Player fell too far. You basically run. That's better. Now there's Afrits down there. I don't know if you noticed. They're going to start attacking me in a minute because they're going to be up here. You have to run across the uh, gaps right at the end. Oh, they're already doing it. Bastards. <laughs> Come on then. Right, it's like dealing with a cat. Are you coming in or what? You're attacking me or what? Come on. You need to. Alright, I'm taking a bit of damage. Try and train some of it back. Very low on mana. Bit of a problem. There is a gap <laughs> between the uh, walkway and the edge of the cliff. Which is why I fell previously. I'm just going to do this if that's alright with you lot. Um, as you can see, both of my manas are in approaching the red zone. Approaching the zero zone, which is the zone in which everything goes horribly wrong. There's another cool bit coming up using those moving things, actually. Which, the number of puzzles that involve them and the number of sort of accoutrements to the levels that um, involve them. Okay, <laughs> I was going to say that means that the other one is. Never mind. Uh, makes me think that maybe they're not that computationally expensive at all, because this entire room. It's just sliding bricks of death. And yet, they didn't use, like, opening doors as often as they possibly could. So I feel like... I feel like I'm wrong in suggesting that 
their refusal to use those things was a compromise. Because there's so much intricacy in this particular part of the, the level right here. But, I mean, there's enough intricacy here to accommodate an entire monastery or chapel full of, you know, doors with hinges. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to touch the sides, actually. Squish it. Squish it. I also appreciate that they continue moving to the extent that the whole thing goes down. That implies it's a trap. Okay. That implies that you're supposed to uh, do both. By which I mean there's more switches. And you're supposed to press the switches. Please let me kill these before the efforts get me. Push. Nearly, nearly. Okay, then. Now I've got more mana for the efforts, you see. I don't appreciate that it rotates me <laughs> to uh, maintain a lock on these. But again, it's a compromise made for the original playstyle where you basically have to use a mouse and uh, the keyboard for turning as well as moving around and strafing was never, it's just unheard of. Which is why I wonder how the hell anyone's supposed to beat this game like that. Maybe you're not. Maybe uh, Raven and Id knew that it was... Uh, maybe they already were using mouse and keyboard for some reason. But I'm pretty sure that didn't turn up until Quake era of, uh, of gaming. Because if Id knew about the mouse and keyboard um, style and used it, then they might have developed a game, this game with Raven, such that you really had no advantage unless you were using the mouse and keyboard style. Basically, have no chance to survive. Make your time. Let's try this again. Oh, you bastard! Let this person make it through. We'll just wait for these things to switch. Should probably use this. Save some mana. Mana from heaven. The fact that that one currently fits perfectly means that I may be wrong that the other. Thing sliding thing is uh, not fitting properly. I mean, that gap looks wrong, right? Wrong, right? I guess it lines up on the other side. So let's see. We need to go... It's actually pretty simple. There's just four of these. Like the actual layout of them. It's very simple indeed. Made it. Right, is that all of them? <laughs> I don't want to make that mistake again. Like, is there one on the other side of me? No. Shit. At least I'm smarter than Annetting, right? Right? Right, Mum? There are more. Fuck. Not that much smarter, apparently. Oh, God. <laughs> this is a long episode. I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to cut it here. <laughs> that used to be really easy. I used to be really good at that part, but I just, I'm rushing again. I'm just not paying attention. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the amount that I died. It is obviously one of the more entertaining episodes that anyone's ever made in the world. Share it with your friends. They'll love it. But thank you for watching this one. And until the next one, I'll see you.